protein. Super important topic, can't wait to talk about it today. Hey, hey, shout out first to our medical students in Normandy, oh, France. Oh, wow. Uh, bonjour. Bon chance avec les études and um, merci. Check out Pepe Le Pew here. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Okay, so Sorry we're going to talk about protein today. Paul, you play a doctor on YouTube. Why don't you, why don't you start us Start I'm a real doctor too, That's right. in addition to playing one on YouTube. Okay. Proteins, yeah, proteins are amateur teams that went to the big league. No, they're not. Proteins are vital molecules okay. that all living things need to survive. Okay. And a lot of them. All right. Let's run through some of the roles of proteins play in the body. First of all, protein is a big uh, three dimensional molecule made up of. Amino acids. Amino acids, there's 20 of those. So a nitrogen containing group. An amino acid, different sequences of amino acids make up these different proteins and dictate how they bend and fold and they're shaped. Okay. Amino acids are made up of nucleotides. Right. Uh, nucleotides, there's four of them, and those are encoded in your genes, in your right. DNA. Thank you, Watson and Crick. This is what made you who you are. Right, so you've got these. DNA that encodes nucleotides, the nucle nucleotides make up these amino acids, the amino acids come together in different uh, forms and shapes to make these proteins, and the proteins play some vital roles in life. Right, and what's interesting is that nowadays with the internet and everyone talking about what they're eating, we've actually broken food down sometimes even into these macronutrients. You talk about, oh, this is protein, or this is fat, or this is carbohydrates. Yeah. We, often we don't even talk about food, and it's actually not the best way to talk about food. Yeah. And we, particularly in North America, are obsessed with getting enough protein. And, and, totally we, and we need it, you're right, we need protein, they yeah. have certain functions in the body, right. they make up your antibodies, yep. right? So how you fight disease, those okay. are proteins. Enzymes, those are molecules that catalyze or help other chemical reactions happen. Okay. Messaging, a lot of hormones are made up of... Not DMs. No, no, those are not made up of protein. Structure, okay. and how your body moves, right. and uh, transport and storage, how cells get certain compounds in and other compounds out, that's all proteins, baby. Right. So What's your favorite protein? Maybe quinoa. Mm -hmm. Mine's hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Oh, not to eat, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean like in the body. I don't like to eat hemoglobin anymore. No, you shouldn't. I used to. Um, okay, so, so protein is really important. Um, and we talk about it a lot. And where do we get it from? We get it from all different kinds of food. But more importantly, before we get to that, is protein deficiency isn't really a problem. Is protein deficiency a problem? Do you remember the disease name of protein deficiency? No. Quashiorcor. That's why I don't remember it, because we yeah. don't see that a lot. We, so almost never, actually. So in North America, if you have a calorically adequate diet, mm -hmm. unless you're eating Skittles and no shade on Skittles, mm -hmm. if you ate Skittles all day, maybe you'd be protein deficient. But the average person, if they're getting enough calories, it is almost unheard of to have protein deficiency. Although I, I do know in some elderly people that have inadequate uh, nutrition intake, yeah. like for example, their albumin could be low. Right, so they're, so they're borderline deficient, they right. just don't develop quashiorcor. Right, right, right. So I mean, it is important as we age to yes. monitor our protein intake, and certainly there, we, we, in medical school, they used to be, refer to them as tea and toasters. Yes, tea people and toasters. Eat toast and drink tea, and certainly you could uh, not be getting an adequate to intake at that point. You have to eat a lot of toast. Yeah, like yeah. whole grain, like good seed. No, no, diet. they're not getting enough protein. With no, toast. I know, but I mean, yeah. you'd have to in order oh, to in be order a tea to, and toaster to meet still, your yeah. protein requirements. Right. You'd have to eat a lot of toast. Right, and add a steak to your tea. That's right. Okay, so how much protein do we need, Paul? And this is controversial. This and it's a is guideline. this is variable. So it's, okay. it, I'm uh, I'm going to say before we jump into any numbers, okay. I'm going to say it's variable. Yes. Uh, from one individual to another. Yes. Uh, for example, a sedentary adult uh, compared to a, someone who is weight training or a professional athlete. Yep. Or uh, a pregnant woman or, or a pregnant, an adolescent. Or an adolescent, for example. And then, of course, as we do get over 40, 50, we start to lose muscle mass. So yes. perhaps our protein intake should go up a little bit. If we exercise that. appropriately. Yeah, so totally it's agree. kind of counterintuitive because yeah. I used to think, oh, as you get older, you need less yeah. protein. No, yeah. no, 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 no. All right. Because of autophagy. Yeah. Um, so 
Numbers. Okay. People so, love numbers. Yeah. And we talk about the RDA or the recommended dietary allowance, and this is designed on a bell curve and we'll maybe show a picture of a bell curve. And what a bell curve does is decides an average distribution of people, what percent of people are in the middle. And then as we further go further out, the percentage of people in those groups become much smaller. So the RDA actually covers two and a half standard deviations above the average or the middle of that curve. So that means 97.5% of people will have enough protein if they take 0.8 grams per kilogram or about 0.4 per pound or a little bit less. Okay. So, so if you weigh, a, if your mass is a certain number of kilograms yep. times 0.8, yep. that'll give you enough. And so for the 150 pound person for a man, it's about 56 grams and for a woman, it's about 45 grams. Yeah. However, yes. your mass is not that great an estimate either because if your mass it depends what your mass is composed of are you is your mass mostly composed of muscle right is there a larger fat percentage in your mass that's going to alter these recommended daily allowances and this is the flaws of things like the rda and even the bmi we've talked about it before if you're like a five foot two 220 pound bodybuilder yeah you're all lean mass but your bmi is going to say you're overweight so yeah. yes this has to be individualized but a guideline even if you just want to remember something easy about a gram per kilo is a nice easy way to remember it okay so about a gram per kilo to remember it or 0.4 grams per, per pound. pound. We're kind of mixing metric and imperial there. I don't like that. We have people all over the world. Yeah. yeah. And, and for athletes, they say in the range of 1.2 to 2 grams per kilo if you're doing um, high competitive sports or an adolescent that's really growing. You know, that 15 year old kid that just seems to grow every time you see them. Okay. So now those numbers, we have to anchor those numbers with how much protein is in certain foods. Okay. I love and this. I think you're going to know. This. I because I am not. <laughs> okay, so so let's start with, so let's go back a little bit. So there's 20 different kinds of amino acids. Nine of them are what are called essential amino acids. So our bodies cannot make them. We have to consume them. The other ones are non-essential, so our bodies can make them. Remember, the amino acids are those building blocks of proteins. proteins. Right, so when you talk about which foods are complete proteins or have all of the protein, certainly animal products are top of that list. Sorry, plant-based people. However, um, all plants have all 20 amino acids. They just don't have high enough concentrations, particularly of, of lysine and some of the sulfur-containing amino acids so that they're not con considered complete other than three of them. So soy, mm -hmm. quinoa, and corn. Have you ever heard of corn? Corn, yeah, corn on the cob, no, no, corn no, no. meal, no, corn no. bread. Q U O R N. Oh, yeah, I was on Star Trek episode two. It's, it's, it took over the whole planet. It's from a, this microfungus that actually is a complete protein. So there are three plants that actually have enough concentrations of everything okay. to be considered complete. So, okay, so back to food. Mm. So you're still looking at your plate, how much protein it is. Let's start with the meat. So one ounce of meat, so whether that's beef, chicken, poultry, um, has about seven grams. Okay. A serving typically is supposed to be about five ounces, no. you know, no bigger than your fist. Yeah, right. So that would be about 35. So imagine if you needed 56, 35 is in your one serving of meat. You're already more than halfway there. Okay. So let's talk about some other stuff. Two tablespoons of peanut butter. Who doesn't love peanut butter? My son is allergic. And <laughs> we're working on getting his allergy taken yeah, care of, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Desensitized. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have no peanut butter in our house. Which is terrifying though, obviously yeah. for people that are penal. We've yeah. talked about that yeah. before too. So two tablespoons of peanut butter, is seven grams of protein. Okay. One cup of lentils, which are amazing foods, has uh, 12 to 15 grams of protein. Yeah. And, and same Wasn't that a Barbara Streisand movie? What? Lentil? What? Yeah. No, I think that was Yentl. Oh, Yentl. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. No protein in that movie. <laughs> well, there may have been. Who knows? Okay. They might have had like a, like a date night where they had like dinner. Um, quinoa, excellent source, 12 to 15 grams. Most vegetables have about three grams um, per cup. Protein, 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 protein. It's everywhere. Right. Okay, so it's you're everywhere. getting it. You're probably yes. getting your if you're if eating you're, enough food. If you're eating enough calories, you're getting enough protein. All right. So is there a problem if you eat too much protein? So theoretically, yes. So first of all, when you eat too much protein, because everyone feels on protein shakes, you're putting 30 or 40 grams of protein. That's four calories per gram. So that's too an much. extra 150, 200 calories. So it's excess calories. So that can be converted to fat. And it's directly related to something that's a big problem in our society, something called NAFLD. We have a video on this. Yes. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Excess protein leads to fatty deposition within your liver, as well as some of your peripheral soft tissues. Right. So that's one of the big concerns. Thanks for that. I was getting at the kidneys. I know okay. you can damage your kidneys yes. if your protein is too high. Can, and I've heard of people who go on super high protein diets and end up with kidney stones. 100%. So kidney stones for sure, as well as if you have a problem, your kidney function is already compromised, this becomes yeah. actually quite dangerous. Strains to these the kidneys. Yeah. So kidney disease people, be really careful about considering.
considering more than your normal amount of, of protein. So as you take in the protein, if you take in too much, your yeah. body's not storing it, you're excreting it, and the kidney's going on overtime to try and get that done. Um, so, I mean, in terms of, it's sort of double-edged sword there. One, your, your kidneys are working overtime to do that. Um, and the other thing is there's no benefit for eating such a high protein intake at one time because you can't store it and can't possibly use it all as a protein. So you end up breaking it down to take the energy out of it. And the energy, of course, is stored as fat. And the reason how we know this actually and how we even got to the RDA is because excess protein is excreted in your urine. So they can you do what are called nitrogen utilization studies where they label the nitrogen that you take in as protein and then they follow it along and they see some of it go into your tissues and then the excess stuff ends up in your urine. So just like excess vitamins, we've talked about this before, the water solubles, they end up in your urine. The fat solubles get stored. So you have to be a little bit careful. And that's actually how you measure kidney function often can, right. kidney disease is diagnosed with proteinuria because you're leaking protein through your kidneys so that's one of the ways that kidney disease is diagnosed. Right and we've talked a lot about how the food industry really just wants to sell you food and that's they do that unfortunately a little bit in a tricky way with, with salt and sugar but also they market to you protein. I've been plant-based about five years and there's nothing crazier than when you go to a restaurant and you order something like would you like protein with that and I'm like I just did. I, I, my wife puts her head down, or my kids put their head down. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, actually, this whole thing is full of protein. He's going to lose it. Right. Really, what they mean is, do you want meat? And we need to kind of separate a little bit that, that all protein doesn't have to be meat. There you go. Meat's a good source. Meat is meat. Dairy products, of course, are yeah. good sources of protein as well. If you're plant based, yep. does that mean no meat at all? Because I th I, someone once told me that, that you can be plant based. But that's just what you based your food on. But you, there, some plant-based people do eat a little bit so of I meat. So I think if someone says that they're plant-based, typically it means that they're all plant-based. Mm -hmm. I think if they're what's called a flexitarian, mm -hmm. then they would say I'm mostly I'll plants, yeah. and then I'll have a little bit of meat. And yeah. I mean, it's not a religion. I think you have to do what works for you. You've called me a flexitarian before. <laughs> I thought just because you saw me with my shirt off in the change. That's right. Flexing. Tickets to the gun show. <laughs> all right. Now you know all about protein. Holy, so you make know Make healthy what choices. Protein. Have diversity in your plate. Make it, you know, eat a whole bunch of different kinds of foods because that's the best way to cover all of your bases with vitamins, minerals, and protein. So you know what a protein is. You know what it's made up of. You know that you're probably getting enough of it in yes. your diet. You can be deficient as you get out older and you don't eat as well as you should be or eat enough that you should be eating. Uh, but for the most part, you're probably getting enough protein so you don't have to reach for those protein supplements. Agreed. So if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. Tell us your experience with protein. Yeah, leave us some comments. I'm sure when you brought up the food industry, that's going to generate a lot of comments. Uh, and remember, you are in charge of your own health and how much protein you eat. We'll see you next time.